Plymouth Township Planning Commission will come to order at 7 o'clock. Secretary, please call roll. Kendra Barbarina is here. Um, Dennis Sobolski. Here. Bob Dorschevitz is excused. Uh, John Itzel. Here. Bob Ostendorf. Here. Keith Postel. Here. Bill Pratt. Here. Good. And just uh, formally uh, welcome Bob Ostendorf to uh, the commission. This is his first meeting, so welcome aboard and glad to have you here. Uh, the approval of this evening's agenda. I don't have any additions or corrections. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve as submitted. Support. Moved by Commissioner Pratt, supported by Commissioner Barbarina to approve the agenda as submitted. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And the approval of the minutes of our June 19th meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve as submitted. Support. Moved by Commissioner Pratt, supported by Commissioner Barbarina to approve the uh, June 19th minutes as submitted. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak to the commission on any non-agenda item? Okay, fine. Okay. First application is uh, number 2087-1112, the Gateways of Plymouth. And uh, Ms. Howell, your report. Thank you and good evening, commissioners. Um, this application uh, was originally approved in 2012 and is back before the commission because recently the um, Township Zoning Board of Appeals, the ZBA, granted a dimensional variance request for an increase in setback um, for uh, uh, one building for units 5, 58, 59, 60, 61, and 62 at the gateways of Plymouth Cond Condominium Development. Um, the setback variance was granted. Um, the requirement is for 60 feet of setback from the M14 uh, right away, and the applicant had requested 45 feet. Um, so the approval for that 15 feet was granted, and the ZBA meeting minutes um, have been included in your packet, along with the applicant's um, narrative describing the justification for the dimensional variance. Um, namely, this allows for some additional guest parking spaces for the complex overall and greater room for snow removal. Um, additionally, the driveways for units 58 through 62 were slightly increased in length to better accommodate those um, personal vehicles parked in the driveway. Um, so the as the dimensional variance was requested, the applicant is before the planning commission um, to receive uh, revised uh, approval for this modification um, to the northeast area of their site plan. And as you can see here, this was their original lands landscape plan um, that will be slightly modified um, to accommodate some of the additional pavement in this area, but the re remainder of the landscaping that was originally proposed along M14 um, and along the east and uh, west property lines will remain intact as proposed. So the recommendation for this evening is that the Planning Commission would approve um, the revised site plan with any conditions um, that would be necessary to accommodate the change in layout and the additional parking spaces. So for instance, if the Planning Commission wanted to see some additional greenery in that area, um, because of the reduced rear lawn space by 15 feet um, or additional uh, landscaping where the parked um, guest spaces will be, then that would be appropriate at this time. And if you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. Both of the um, original uh, site plan and the uh, proposed excuse me, uh, site plan are included in your packet as, as well as that original landscape plan. Okay, thank you. And before you start, Alice, can, can you just, uh, if you would go over to the podium, and Alice, can you give him the, the small portable mic so we can hear him when he sits back at the table? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. please, thank you. It's open mic. What song do you like to sing? I think it's off. Push a button there. 
better? Hello, hello? Okay. All right, anyway. Hi, I'm Michael Garzoni, appearing on, with, uh, on behalf of Landtech Companies, the parent company of the Hills of Woodridge LLC project. Um, I can't really summarize better than what uh, Ms. Holly did. So if you have any questions or whatever, I'd be free to uh, able to answer maybe. Okay. Well, do, do any of the commissioners have any questions, landscaping well, issues? <clears throat> we had uh, approved the uh, project before this except for the uh, variance request, right? Right. Uh, they, and, they went to the board of uh, right. the ZBA. Uh, ZBA. Now, since uh, the ZBA um, ruling and things, has anything changed that would justify us adding more requirements or anything? Perhaps some landscaping. I think that's the issue you're asking us to examine. Yeah, so what's changed on the site plan is that now these units have a smaller rear yard space by 15 feet. Um, and there's some additional parking here in front and a, a slight increase in the driveway length. So if there's, if this was discussed during the original site plan approval in 2012, um, if there was concern about the noise barrier, now these units are closer to it, um, then that would be justification for adding some additional landscaping in that area. So it's, re it's really at our discretion what you're you know what the yeah. commission feelings are <clears throat> well my my question is uh, w what's changed since originally i mean they were always going to have the reduced uh, backyard correct well originally they had 60 feet to the right away um or the property line backing up to m14 and now it's 45 feet so so to answer your question no on the original approval, they were at 60 feet. Now they're now they came to the planning department and said, "Well, we'd really like to, to lengthen those driveways and put some more parking in, but that would force us to move the the buildings closer to M14 okay. by 15 Understand. feet." That's that's the change. The change is is the, are those those kind of changes. So is it our feeling to require more vegetation back there to try to cut down on the noise from the freeway? That's the bottom line issue. If, if I might, um, the noise from the freeway really is not an issue. It's about a 40-foot drop down to the pathway of M14 at that point. There's a masonry wall up. We're going to be adding a berm across there that will also deflect the sound. And all of our units are built with exterior 2x6 uh, construction. And, it is a very tight building. I, I, and, and I guess the other thing is anybody moving in there, they're going to make their own determination on whether or not that, that trade-off or noise is, is something that they can live with, obviously. Um, but we feel that we've mitigated it to a point where it shouldn't be an issue. And how, how uh, tall of a berm are you putting in? Looking at probably four to five feet, just a, a roll out. Are you having uh, any uh, vegetation on top of that berm? According to, as you see, there's um, with the vegetation, the uh, landscape plan, we will be adding that. There's some scattered trees that are still there, but for the most part, a lot of what you see is going to be put in new. Did you say there's concrete? Uh, it's masonry wall. Back Did there. you build it? No, it was there. It must have been from the um, freeway because it's a matching wall all the way down. Would additional vegetation ha have a significant impact on the noise? Pardon? Would uh, additional vegetation have a significant impact on the noise? I don't believe it would. Is that the same vegetation that was proposed originally when you were Correct. before us? It is? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Sprinklers? Irrigation? Right. Yes. Any thoughts? Um, Laura, what do you think as far as additional vegetation and the impact on the noise for those residents? Well, 
they are creating the berm and there are um, some proposed evergreens along this stretch. Uh, they might be able to stagger them a bit more um, and eventually once they're mature, that might um, enhance the area a little bit, certainly not in the first, you know, first five, 10 years. Um, but it could perhaps be a, a bit nicer, even a couple in here um, to kind of fill in the gaps. So you're putting in two, two by six uh, framing on those units? Correct. Uh, is there any special sound insulation that's being installed at the time? Well, it's, an R, it's an R24 insulation, wall insulation, so it's rather thick insulation. Um, it, I mean, it's, pre, it's just a pretty well-built building. Mm -hmm. so. I think from the inside, I would agree that the noise would probably be minimal. It's more of a question of, as this is there limited outdoor space, you know, for living in a attached unit, um, and because of the decrease in lawn area, would additional landscaping be an amenity for those future residents? Um, because it's unlikely that they would, you know, plant additional heavy landscaping in the middle. So this is really kind of their backdrop. Are they going to have decks on the back of those houses? There will be a patio, yes. Okay. So perhaps more screening would make it quieter when they're out on the decks? I, I don't think any mm -hmm. screening is going to change the volume the noise because, quite honestly, there really isn't anything there. Mm -hmm. The roadway is literally 40, 44 feet. I think we measured it, but had it measured in the, uh, it, it's a good drop all the way down from, from that, that ridge right there. Yeah, it begins the tunnel. Hmm? It begins the tunnel. Yeah. yeah. But I, I just wonder uh, about maybe just a couple of plantings, uh, you know, like you have those staggered ones uh, along there. Uh, to the east of there, just a couple more uh, plantings in between the, the where it says seeded lawn and that, that first tree and then in between those two trees. Because you got two trees over here, you got some trees. I don't know that that area that's not designated seeded lawn, what is that? It being up in the upper corner there? Yeah. That is a lot of that is existing vegetation. Okay. That's it that's existing vegetation. Correct. That that would be the, from my perspective, the only thing I might suggest is is to add some uh, some trees in between the, the lawn area and that uh, that first tree and in between the uh, uh, two trees uh, next to further just further east of that because I think that's then then you've got um, uh, the barrier um, for all for all was that five units there mm -hmm. um, uh, that would uh, would be similar, I guess, is my point. I think we'd be open to maybe doing that. Any other thoughts, suggestions? Are we ready for a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the um, uh, PC uh, 20871112 for the gateways of Plymouth uh, regarding the revised site plan with the addition of some trees to the east of, uh, of the seated area, additional trees to the, the, uh, toward the uh, M14 freeway uh, to the east of the seated uh, lawn area. Support. Moved by Commissioner uh, Pratt and supported by Commissioner Barbarina to grant approval to application 2087 1112 subject to said condition of uh, landscaping. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Good luck.
Thank you. You can just leave the mic there on the table. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Next is application 2245-0517, the Plymouth uh, Plaza revised. And Ms. Howell, your report. Thank you, Chairman Sobolski. <clears throat> we have discussed this review in depth, so I'm going to cover the high points and start with some of the significant changes since the last revision. Um, after discussions with the fire department, the applicant has revised the site plan now to increase this driveway width that runs the um, entire east-west and uh, loops around the east side of the building uh, to, 22, to 22 feet in width. And this will accommodate the um, ambulatory um, uh, vehicles um, from the fire um, and safety department, um, which is per their recommendation. By increasing the driveway width along here, the building was subsequently shrunk. There were no other changes um, to the parking or the um, existing drive-throughs and exit lanes. Um, the 10-foot uh, pedestrian walkway was also intact um, with that change. So as a result, there was about 400 plus um, square feet of building uh, square footage that was removed to accommodate uh, the ambulatory services. And as a result of that reduction in square footage, um, there was also a slight reduction to the overall parking required um, due, due to that um, retail square footage. Um, the other major change was that uh, some of the, the uh, corner area and drive-through area, some of the curbing um, was removed per the recommendation of the fire department in order to make sure that their vehicles had proper turning radius. Um, so that's been adjusted as well. And you'll see on page two of our report that the uh, current square footages for each of the two restaurant units, the urgent care, and then the three undetermined retail tenants are listed um, with the total square footage now just over 12,000 for the whole site. And with that, the um, table B, the dimensional standards, is uh, updated and accurate. So we know for certain these are the, the right numbers as they're shown on the site plan. I'll come back to the landscaping um, comments in a moment. But I would like to touch on the parking as it's related. So table C details the new parking calculations, which are based on the revised square footages. In total, including the outdoor seating, since there are two outdoor patios, one for Taco Bell and a secondary patio for Panera, uh, there's a requirement of 121 parking spaces um, per the ordinance. The applicant is proposing 106 spaces, including six ADA spaces and two dedicated curbside spaces for the Panera restaurant, which are located directly here in front of the main door and adjacent to the patio to ensure that this is perhaps a, a quieter area. So the waiver that the, plan, or that the applicant is requesting tonight is for the deficiency of the outdoor patios only. Um, based on the seating that's required for that, they need to have 16 spaces and they only have one of those outdoor patio seat spaces. So they're, they're deficient 15 spaces and that is a result of the two outdoor areas. It is important to note that the applicant has added a note on the cover of the site plan that those patios will be seasonal outdoor patios and that any modification to those would require coming back before the planning commission. Um, so for instance, if they wanted to do something like we've seen pop up um, around town and in other neighboring communities, those igloos um, where you can have uh, year-round outdoor seating. 
if they wanted to do something like that or have a more permanent enclosure, that would require Planning Commission consideration and review and approval. Um, so there is that note on the cover sheet, and then it also further stipulates that this will be a seasonal patio um, limited to the months of May through September. So there's only a five-month period that they are um, requesting to use those outdoor seats. So for the majority, well, for six to seven months out of the year, um, the site is adequately parked um, and meets the ordinance, but it is those five months that they are requesting the waiver of 15 parking spaces. So one of our recommendations is that the seasonal parking be addressed to the satisfaction of the Planning Commission. In addition, we had some concerns about the building architecture and design overall. Um, there were some photos provided as inspirational images um, for the applicant's design team. And then there was also um, just a couple of elevations that were rendered by McKenna that were provided, um, incorporating some more traditional elements um, to the building. The applicant has supplied a revised um, set of building elevations for the, Pan the Panera building, the multi-tenant building, which are shown on the screen here. And you can see that some of the recommendations from the review letter have been incorporated. There's a bit more detail that's been added, um, awnings, brick detail, the um, limestone. So this is an improvement to the um, building elevations, and our recommendation is that pending any further feedback from the commission, um, that the buildings be finalized administratively um, with the administrative review committee. <coughs> and that feedback is given based on these latest designs. Um, we also requested that the applicant provide the commission with the latest um, building materials. Um, there are some slight adjustments to their photometric plan, the lighting plan that was provided um, that bring the site closer into compliance. And there's just a couple adjustments that we um, would like to work out administratively um, with the applicant, which is why that last note is in there. And then as far as the landscaping plan, the applicant has added some additional landscaping to the site. As we discussed with the management team at Home Depot, um, while these landscape um, areas are outside of the applicant's site here, along the two access drives, Home Depot is willing to allow installation of additional vegetation um, and will maintain that vegetation moving forward um, for a better site overall. So the applicant has added some additional evergreen screening along both the south and um, west landscape areas in keeping with this. Um, based on the improvements that are happening along Five Mile, um, some of the existing vegetation might be impacted. So we'd still like to refine that area a bit more with the applicant and understand exactly what the county's plans are um, in that area moving forward. So we do request that that would be an item for administrative um, consideration. But in terms of the other landscaping that is provided um, on the site, they do meet the ordinance standards and have um, provided this additional buffering as requested. And then lastly, um, final approval is contingent, of course, on engineering um, and that those items have been addressed to Spalding satisfaction. The applicant is here tonight to prevent, uh, present some um, building materials, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. All right, thank you. And Mr. Richmond, your engineering report. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, we have reviewed the uh, plan uh, received in our office on July 11th, 2019. Uh, our, site, our review is we approved the final site plan as noted. We have just a few little 
comments that need to be addressed, and those can be addressed during engineering plans and when we're working on um, uh, our pre-construction meeting. It's just mostly some grades around the ADA parking space and just a revised permit from Wayne County. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, thank you. Any applicant is here? Okay, if you want to step up, the mic is on the table. I see you brought some building materials, and maybe that's good. Oh, yeah, just a minute. Oh, <clears throat> Laura, did, uh, did you receive a report from the fire department? We did not receive a report from the fire department um, because of vacation and uh, illness, um, but... As they have added the uh, appropriate drive aisle and turning radius, um, the, it is satisfactory, and we'll have something in writing for the file. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> I have a question, Laura. Mm -hmm. On page five of your package, on the Panera mechanical drawing, you show that it looks almost like exposed brick stuck in stucco or some kind of a design feature that's quite different than the one on the screen right now. Which one is the, uh, the current one? Oh, um, what's currently shown on the screen is what's proposed by the applicant. And the detail on page five, that's meant to show as um, brick. It's just not, it's a, just a hand-drawn sketch. Uh, so the, the blotchiness or the, what doesn't signify any special detail? Though That would just be... Um, normal brick, um, like running bond pattern. It wouldn't be stucco. Uh, yeah. We're, no, no, we're not pr pr proposing or promoting any sort of um, ethos I, or... I guess I'm questioning, what are the spots on page five? What does that represent? Um, Can I take that? Go Can ahead, I take go ahead, that? Go ahead. You're looking at a drawing that was done by, by McKenna as a suggestions to the applicant. And it's uh, not has nothing to do with that's the one. The, that's the one. So, discussion right. of that is really the one you mocked earlier Nicks. is the latest addition. Yeah. So, yeah. do you mean these little wavy lines? Whatever they are. It's, new. There, it's just a um, symbolized brick without actually drawing the brick in because it's not done on the computer or anything. It's just a hand sketch. Right. Got it. And then we did receive the revised facades in an email. Uh, it was yesterday or today. I didn't even see it. <laughs> okay, the floor is yours. My name is Ned Jawish. I'm uh, the owner of the project, and I have with me uh, people from uh, Panera Group and from Taco Bell for any questions uh, regarding the Taco Bell building and their site. And Tim is here for the Panera site. Um, Close. Yes. Or you can you can just hold it up because that way you can pass it around if someone else wants to join in. Well, we're open for any question. I think uh, Laura did a very good job on presenting all the changes we made, and I think uh, we came a long way. And uh, it boils down to the outside seating. We feel the outside seating is that uh, first it's seasonal, second we didn't think it's uh, there's a specific ordinance in uh, uh, written uh, regarding that. And uh, it, for it to really be deficient, it has to be all full, you know, at the peak hour, at, the, at lunch hour, which is uh, the, the shopping center, the Taco Bell, the retail, they are all got to be full for it to be short. And we watched uh, a couple uh, Panera restaurants in the area, and we went there, me and uh, Leo Gonzalez, he's going to be here, to really kind of uh, see the operation at the, at the lunch hour. And we sat there and we took some, you know, notes and uh, statistics. We never seen that park, you know, that dining room full. And we never seen that outside seating is like, you know, people uh, having lunch and, and sitting outside. It is really mostly people use that outside seating for, you know, dinner time, you know, where it's really they have time. But not at lunch hour when they have half an hour to take lunch and they're going to sit and, and, and then the rest of the shopping center is going to be full at the time. The urgent care is going to be full and, and, and the retail and the Taco Bell for it to be deficient. 
And uh, in my opinion, uh, a lot, and we, we, I do develop land all over. We've never seen, you know, I mean, I never ran into where the specific ordinance is written in, uh, for outside seating. It's always seasonal, and it's been seasonal. This is Michigan, and, uh, you know, uh, the days are sunny, and, you know, you can sit outside. And the lunch hour, it's really kind of, we're talking about really, really rare time where you're going to have all these elements combined, and they're going to happen. Well, Ned, let's hear from whoever the Panera representative is, sure. oh, and maybe you can talk about what your uh, experience has been with the outdoor seating uh, for the, you know, buildings that you have that offer that. Sure, absolutely. Uh, my name is Daniel Walsh. I'm the senior real estate manager with Panera Bread. Uh, what Ned described is, is very true. We look at the, the seating on the outside patio as being seasonal. Uh, we see people that are uh, electing to sit out there instead of sitting inside the cafe uh, because of the, you know, the short season that we have in, in this part of the country. So that's been our experience. Uh, you know, we reviewed the site plan, obviously, with our operations team, both on a national level and, and local level as well as with our design team, and we were satisfied with the, uh, with the parking that was provided and the plan that was shown. And what about the taco representative? Uh. Good evening. My name is J.J. Schmidt. Um, I'm with Marlin Properties. I do the real estate site work for uh, Taco Bell Corporate here in Metro Detroit and um, worked on this site, bringing Taco Bell to the site. As it relates to the um, patio area, that's an amenity that, They've been incorporating more and more, especially with communities that want to have more pedestrian friendly, more of a experience. Um, it is not a heavily used item. Um, it's, I can tell you, roughly 70% of the business uh, in a Taco Bell goes through the drive through So if you do the math, um, and even fewer yet will use the patio. Um, in particular when it's a seasonal uh, situation too. So. so question for the Panera representative again. So that's an interesting statistic about the percentages. What Do you, do you have any uh, ballpark figures at percentage of customers that are dining in, taking out, uh, that sure. kind of thing? Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, our, our business has actually changed uh, a lot with, with the industry. Obviously, we don't have as much business going through our drive through as, as someone like Taco Bell has. but. Uh, as we've added drive-through, as we've leveraged our mobile technology, we really lead the industry with respect to mobile, uh, which is why we have the rapid pickup spaces uh, out front. Uh, used to be that the majority of our business was in our dining room. Uh, with all of the evolution of drive-through and with technology, we've actually seen that reverse, where you know now about 60% of our business uh, can it range anywhere from 55 to 65% of our business is actually off-premise. Uh, and the remainder of that is in the dining room. And I could say five years ago, it was the opposite of that. So it's really, it's where the industry is going, and, and Panera is just uh, following that, that path. Do you see an increase in the delivery services? I presume you're going to offer that. We do. Uh, we do. Uh, in fact, we, we actually deliver ourselves. Uh, we've started to look at using the third-party aggregators that, uh, that do delivery as well. But, yes, that's, uh, that's part of that trend toward off-premise dining. Questions from the commission? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, uh, so uh, I'm assuming since we got Taco Bell and Panera here that, that you have no uh, objection to the restriction of May to September for your outdoor seating. And Taco Bell, I don't know about Panera, but Taco Bell, isn't your outdoor seating fixed so it's there all year round? I mean, aren't they cement? They're not like chairs and things like that. They they can do it a variety of different ways. Um, I've seen some where that's more of a fixed situation. I've seen some where they literally pull it out, and you know they might have some umbrellas during the summer, right? But very portable material that they'll just pull off, and I can see that patio being open, you know, just as a large sidewalk during the off-season time. Well, but but the the commission is, is, according to the plan at any rate, is restricting the use of those facilities from May to September. Does, does either one of you have a problem with that? And 
making sure that it's enforced? Taco Bell doesn't. Okay. We don't either. Can okay. Any other questions? <coughs> I have a question uh, relative to your finishes. How similar is that finish to the store or the location in downtown Summerside, Maine? I, um, I believe that it's it's fairly similar. You know, our, our elevations can continue to evolve, um, but this being an all brick uh, facade, which is what's proposed, uh, is is you know in line with what we typically build. We uh, our our typical building will usually have some sort of ephos on it as well. Uh, so this is a bit of an upgrade, I think, from what we uh, we would typically build. Yes. Uh, I have a, a comment on the uh, parking. The uh, parking, uh, there, since there is no other area, if if there isn't enough parking for anybody to go any place, it, it limits your business. And so you're in the best position to decide whether you have adequate parking. It's not like they can go uh, infringe on a neighbor and uh, and and accomplish that. So uh, I, I would not not be opposed to the way it is now with the uh, 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 limited amount of parking because you people know best what you need. So um, uh, I would say, though, that uh, when uh, we started talking here and uh, Laura said this has been thoroughly discussed before, uh, that's an understatement. <laughs> this is probably the longest uh, project that we've had with more <laughs> more changes. Did you have anything? No. Is it structured right now for four units, uh, three units? There's three units and uh, uh, urban kitchen. Pardon? There's three units and urban kitchen. How many total units though? There's a th according. I mean, the plans right now call for three units, a commercial, and uh, urgent care at the end. Uh, what are we gonna get on a three units? Uh, still. So you're marketing three units. Right? Yes. Yes. Walls, but you can move the walls and do whatever. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. None of those will be restaurants. No. No, that's in the that's in the site plan that there are no restaurants. Yeah. I mean, it's not. Uh, it's, uh, I'm not saying we're not going to take our way, but we're going to meet the coordinates. This is a general commercial. This one. we'll meet the requirement, parking requirement. So there's parking uh, spaces designated for those spaces. So we'll meet that thing. That uh, uh, now it is just general commercial, and we no. whatever we do there, we're no. going to have. No, Ned, your plan says no restaurants. No, we never said no restaurants. Yeah, it does. When did we do? We never say the North. We said we meet the requirements. It's on the Take plan, away. Ned. It's on your plan. Um, I will never uh, admit there's no rest. What about if, if Panera leaves? What am I going to do? Well, no, no. I'm talking about for those three units in the middle or your, or your, your er, current, currently intended uh, urgent care. The Those three we units. Already, we already talked about the urgent care. We have no problem. I mean, we already committed to the urgent care. As a matter of fact, I, I understand urgent, that, but that doesn't mean the urgent care will leave there forever. It, and, it, that's and my point. The same thing as a Panera. They don't guarantee they're going to be there forever. Or no, but the Panera, the, you're not understanding what I'm saying. The Panera space is a dedicated restaurant space. Everybody understands that. And so is the Taco Bell. It's a dedicated. I mean, nobody would would put anything else in there besides a restaurant of some kind. What we're saying is that on your plan, am I right about that? Sorry, it's correct that the site plan does say no other any other restaurant would be located in the other tenant spaces excluding Taco Bell and the Panera space. We meant restaurant and they are here. They can in our lease, and I mention it again, clear and, 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 and as it is, in our lease with, with Panera, there is no sit-down restaurant in the thing. There's no sit-down. We are not allowed to have a sit-down restaurant. So what are we talking about? And here's where we come 
a well, crop and then we talked That's about not what your plan says. Your plan says restaurant, period. Does not say sit-down restaurant. Is, that, is, uh, is a pizza uh, shop? A, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, a, uh, a guy, a, a Little Caesars or a Domino's is a restaurant. We don't. You, know. They serve food, don't they? That's we are different in this definition. Then a takeout restaurant, it is okay. It is so, a so what what the commission can do in its motion is say no restaurant of any kind, and that will so solve the problem with your definition. We we don't want approval with no restaurant period. And take away a restaurant will meet the ordinance and will meet the requirement of the parking. So why we have to eliminate an, a, an element uh, that's not going to impact that uh, uh, center? And that's what we always meant to, is, is we have a, a, a pizza in the future and I have no, an open space. What am I going to do? Leave it open and not have, and if I meet the parking requirement and it's a takeaway uh, place, I'm, I'm going to not have it? Right. You're not going to have it. Let me ask this question, Laura. Is there a different I know I've asked this before. I can never remember the answer. Is there a different standard uh, for restaurants? You go by how many tables, how many seats are in the restaurant, if another restaurant did go into those other uh, three units? Yes, it's just like the Panera. It's the seating capacity versus the usable square footage for a retail. So if it was a takeout place with no tables for eating, it wouldn't impact uh, the parking requirement? It very well might. Um, it depends on the number of employees and um, how it mixes in with the other uses and if the size of these, you know, um, flexible building walls would change or not. So perhaps um, because it's all hypothetical in the future, um, you know, if it was uh, pleasing to the commission, you could include in your motion that any changes to the use other than retail would require planning commission review. And they'd have to come back and justify based on the current users and um, the space, the layout, the occupancy, if it was appropriate or not. Okay. See, what we're, what we're trying to avoid is the situation on the, uh, the strip mall uh, further down on Five Mile wasn't intended to be one one food supply place after, I'm not going to say restaurant, uh, after the other. And they require more parking spaces. And the, it's very, very tight in there. Let me speak about that. You know, I, I live in that area. I've been in that area for the last 25 years. My gas station is right at the corner. Yeah. And, and I see that place every day. We are not trying to, you know, duplicate that and have the same problem. That's why we we work and uh, and 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 have a mixer used. I, if if I, if if they allow even you guys allow another restaurant, I will not work. I sit down restaurant because I don't want to duplicate, you know, that that the shopping center you just talked about east. So we're not trying to to do that. As a matter of fact, that's why we are going to, you know, to the medical area and and and, and fill the rest of the spaces. But here we're talking about, you know, future, you know, and, uh, and, and, and things change. So I'm not going to put, uh, on a, you know, a, a, and, and limit myself to something. I meet the, the ordinance with it, and it, sh it shouldn't be any problem. Talking about, you know, let's say I have a space open, and a, a pizza play, uh, pizzeria want to come in and, 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 uh, and open a uh, takeaway uh, uh, pizza, so I will, I will, I won't. I mean, I will leave it open because the, the, the things happen, and I'm meeting the ordinance. I meet the uh, 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 parking requ parking requirement, and uh, that's why I said, you know, I have no problem saying there's no sit down restaurant. As a matter of fact, in my like I said, I, my lease is, uh, uh, specify that. Plus, I don't want a congestion more than what it is. You know, we ask even right now, even on on a, on a side of, of the whole thing. We're talking to Home Depot to have some additional parking and, and kind of mutual parking because we, have, we own the property even south. So we are concerned as much as you are on a congestion. We want a successful 
business is going there. And we, I, I don't want to be over congested because that w will really impact negative to the whole thing. So we want a combination of tenants that they work together in harmony and successful. So that's, 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 the, that, that's the intent. But for me to say no restaurant at all, even a takeaway restaurant, it's just, it's well, very, we're very not We're not saying that, Ned. We're just saying that if the, if the use, if the retail use changes, then, and you wanted to put in a, you know, so changing means you might put another restaurant in, a takeout place, pizza, Chinese, whatever it's going to be, you would just need to come back to the commission so that we could review the parking requirements for that. And you, you said, you, you yourself said that you don't want that congestion that we certainly have all seen, you know, uh, to the east of your gas station. So you shouldn't have really any objection to it. And really, we're protecting Panera and Taco Bell as well, because if, if a congested parking lot occurs there, people are going to say, I don't want to go there. It's hard to get in and out. So we're not saying you can't have it. We're just saying that if it changes from retail, that it would have to come back to the commission for review. And I'm presuming, I think pretty confidently, that that review is going to look to meet the parking requirement. And if it's a takeout place, you know, with just, you know, half a dozen uh, workers, uh, it shouldn't be a big issue. Wouldn't uh, it, it satisfy it, though, that, that it's, it does not include a sit-down restaurant, uh, the fact that, you know, they're, they're retail, uh, they're selling food, <coughs> but not for consumption on the site. So, I mean, why would, uh, I'm tending to agree with Ned that that wouldn't really make sense. Well, if they're putting more seating, <laughs> seating there, it yeah. means that it's going to impact the parking. Not seating. Well, if, they're just, if it's a takeout place with no seating, then it's most likely will not be an issue. It, we would just review how many uh, employees are on that particular uh, facade <coughs> or whatever you want to call it. I think that's, a, to me, a reasonable approach, mm -hmm. what you just said. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't disagree with that either. I, the, I, what I did was I went to this infamous um, facility that we're talking about east of your shell station. And um, it has, it, it, I believe, and it, I'm, I think I was even on the commission when we approved that site, I believe we were, uh, we were, uh, not as um, diligent about the parking as we should have been because that place has 139 spaces and 15 different stores of which seven now are restaurants uh, and um, the reason I know about the reason I was talking about the urgent care is because there was an urgent care there and that's that store or that booth is now empty. It, it's not there anymore. So, uh, my concern is that anecdotally, uh, because people know that I'm on the planning commission, they come to me and they say, boy, don't make, don't make the same mistake you made over here because this place is a disaster. So, we want to avoid that. To, to further, see, Bob, I never had anything to say. <laughs> to further your uh, or to rebut something that you said about parking, no, you're asking the commission for a, 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 a variance, a, not a variance, but a, a accommodation. Co accommodation on your parking. You do not, do not, as our current zoning ordinance stands, meet our standard for parking. You do not. But what you're looking at is your patios, which are your problem, um, are only uh, certain uh, uh, usable or certain times of the month, certain times of the year, and therefore that shouldn't be counted in. 
Well, our, that's not the way our ordinance reads presently. Now, commissioners, I think that might be something we need to look at. We need to address that because what you're seeing happen in these establishments is more and more of this outside seating thing, and we need something in our ordinance that doesn't, that, that isn't quite so neblige, nebulous, uh, in my opinion, at any rate. Um, uh, but be that as it may, um, uh, I think the chairman's suggestion of, of an approach to to your other four retail spaces um, uh, is is a valid one, and uh, I think that's uh, uh, something we the commission could should consider in its motion. And just going back for a minute, a little bit of a history lesson on the other site. There were three owners when that was developed. There were three owners. It was very difficult to get those three people to gather to agree with something. It wasn't uh, obvious at the beginning that it was going to be uh, so many restaurants. And I know that the, the planner and the head of the DPW that was here, Jim Anwitz, was there, was working hard with those people to try to find a solution to the parking. I would say he, he did the best he could. But even now we see that, there, especially at noontime, people are overflowing into the, um, to the adjacent uh, owners. So we don't want to see this happening with this particular site. It's not, we're not saying you can't have another restaurant, but if you do, you just have to come back to us so that we can review the, the, if, if you have adequate parking. So we're not tying your hands. And it's really, and, and I think we're on the same page. You don't want to have the congestion just like we do. So we agree on that. Mr. Sawalski, I have no problem of having, if I am going to go to a restaurant, I, I define the restaurant as sit down. When we, we're talking here, take away. There's no sit down. Why do I need to come back for something It's already a meeting, everything on a plan, parking requirement? It's just we say pizza versus something else, and we're meeting the requirement. So what I'm saying in here, I mean, we are set on saying food thing. I don't want the congestion. Me, I, I, but believe me, that thing behind me, when it's full, sometimes they park at the station, as a matter of fact. So we've seen that. But it's full of restaurants. It's all restaurants. At one point in time, it, 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 there's only the urgent care uh, that's non food and the uh, cleaner. The rest is all restaurants, including the, uh, the uh, ice cream place. And uh, so they were all restaurants. And there's no other places in there. And at, at lunch hour, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a problem. There's a nail so we're not, we're not nail like that. There, What's that. There's a nail salon in there. There's a nail salon in there, too. <laughs> but at one time, they were, they were now shrinking in the restaurants. Uh, at one time, there was an ice cream place behind yeah. the car wash, mm -hmm. and there was a, the, uh, uh, that's closed, and uh, uh, that, there's a Chinese, uh, not Chinese, is it the Japanese? It's the sushi place. place. Sushi place, yeah. But Ned, so, Ned, 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 here, your premise is not correct. You're saying you meet the, the, the uh, zoning ordinance. You do not meet the zoning ordinance. You're asking for the zone, the planning commission, to give you an accommodation on your parking with the zoning ordinance, and you do not meet it. So, don't tell me that you do, because that's absolutely untrue. So, what we're saying is, okay, we'll give you, an, we'll, we'll tentatively, if everybody else agrees, give you an accommodation on your parking, but. We're also going to put a restriction that anything, any other use other than regular retail in your other spaces, you're going to, if, if it's a takeaway restaurant of any kind, has to come back here for us to take a look at the parking again. And that's a reasonable thing. You're asking for an accommodation. We're tentatively willing to give you an accommodation. We're asking for an additional restriction. And to be positive, thank you for reducing the size of the building. And that helped, I believe, to, to improve the circulation on the site. So I appreciate that. I think the commission appreciates that. 
as well as the the uh, the gazebo, the you know the welcoming sign on the corner. So I think we're all in agreement. You know, we're, we're you have helped us to some extent. We uh, are trying to help you as well with the accommodation of the parking. We're not trying to tie your hands. We just want to uh, alleviate or n not have that same situation, and we agree on that. You, you are interested as well as not having uh, a, a congested uh, parking lot. So we're just wanting to make sure that that's going to happen in the future. Here, here's a condition. If, if we agree to this. you got to have to be on the mic. Yeah. If we agree to this, we want. We, Leo Gonzalez, <laughs> CRS commercial, for all who may not know me. Um, we understand your consideration. However, we would expect that if we came back with the takeout restaurant in the future, that whatever we replaced it with equal retail, that if it matched the amount of retail spaces that were required for that retail and we matched it up with the takeout, that you're, we would get your favorable consideration in that. Because at that point, we don't feel we're exacerbating the problem anymore. Mm -hmm. We're saying we've re reached, reached these milestones and you're giving us this concession and and if we can agree that this takeout is equal to what we would have as a retailer there then i think it's something that we can consider Did you have and i don't know why you would want to pick a different standard if we met the standard i'm, not, I'm, the not, quote, I'm just not, i'm not taking a different no. standard well no, you're, no, no. You're, again leo not, you no, no, do no, not just, meet the parking zoning I realize ordinance it, I realize standard. It. You do not make, meet that. All we're saying to you is that we want uh, to, to have the opportunity to review if you decide you want to put some other kind of thing other than a regular retail establishment in those three spaces or in your urgent care space. And I'm asking you that if we agree to this, is that if we bring back a takeout in the future, if that's equal to the retailer that it's replacing in parking requirements, that we would at least get your consideration. We, we would have, if that's the case, we would have no um, um, status uh, or basis to deny the request. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need the, the microphone. We're getting the high sign. That you need the mic. So what I'm saying in here is, is, you know, everybody's in agreement. If we come back and we needed a takeaway restaurant, I mean, place that meet, I agree with you about the outside seating. That we don't, we're short on outside seating. If we we are in disagreement, it is defined in in the uh, ordinance or not. But we all working toward the same goal is to not have congestion in, on, on this center. We all in agreement. We all saying if we have a take takeaway place with no seating, it should not impact the parking lot more than what it is now. Well, it is short as now. I'm not saying it is not short of so who, who so decides that? Here, it so is Ned, not adding to it. That your your assumption is that all takeaway restaurants have the same number of employees. That's simply not true. That is simply not true. And so what we're saying to you is, if you take, as an example, if you take two of those places and suddenly load up uh, something that has 20 employees, what do you got? You got a problem. I'm not a guard of how many people in every restaurant in the town that they have. I mean, we, there's, there's ordinance we meet. You, Ned, know. You, these, you know where I'm headed. And so 
you know, that's it. Just it just seems to me that 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 you're asking us for an accommodation, and we want to make sure that this site is clean in the future. I think it's also a matter of who decides that it has no impact, whether you internally decide, oh, that should be no problem, or whether we're involved in it. Well, I, I just don't want to be in a position in here because you, uh, the, the commission is, is, is trying to accommodate this site and overcome the shortage of the parking lot on uh, uh, concern, I mean, related to the outside seating that I'm going to be penalized for the rest of the things and not having food, you know, if, if this is essential, you know, be it. And you know, if you guys don't want it, that, that Panera be it there, we drop it right now. I mean, and, and, and then move on. And then I put something else because the fact is, I, I mean, I kept reducing this uh, shopping center to 12,000 square foot from 16. You know, and everything that uh, planning commission and the planner asked for, we did. We did, we brought a, a corner in here, it's gonna cost us $150,000 just to, to make uh, you know, the entry to the city a, 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 a pure. So we did everything possibly, and, and, and with the admission of the planner that we did, we came a long way. But right now, for me to sit down and I say, you know, well, we're not gonna have food at all because we're gonna have, be short on, uh, uh, on, on uh, outside seating, where we feel it is really not an ordinance ourselves, but fine, it is shorted. It is an opinion, and the uh, planning uh, planner's opinion that it is a, a part of the ordinance, and we are short outside city. But for that to be penalized, that I don't have no food at all, and and and, it, and we're trying to not impact that things more than it is. I cannot guarantee how many employees anybody has got. You know, even it, it, this is we are following codes in here. We're not following. We're not guarding here how much uh, people w w will have. Uh, on, on the promises, and it doesn't work that way. Well, There's net, more than net, a meeting code. Net, we agree on one thing. We don't want to have a congested parking lot. That's, that's we, 100%. Okay. We all so what you're, what you're suggesting is that you will be the sole decider of what goes in there and the impact on the parking. No, we're, we're not. Saying, no, we're not. Because no, okay. under the new application, under a new use, it would have to come before the building department. The building department would look at the plan that was approved, and have to match up the use with the amount of parking that's required. That's always your oversight in any use. You know, we're talking about a drive, we're talking about our food use. There might be another use that comes along that you guys don't like in the future that has to become because the change of use of what was there, and the building department would have that shot at doing the analysis of what was approved and what's required. So let me ask, Laura, is, is what he says an accurate portrayal of the process that would happen in the future? I'm not sure if the building department gets that detailed with the reoccupancy permits, um, especially if, like in this case, units, the proposed retail tenants, if there was flexibility and there's only one, moving to one larger space now, um, most likely they would, um, send it up to the planning department um, for review, um, but we haven't like received that request. For instance, with the other plaza to the east that uh, you were discussing, that has that process hasn't been um, adhered mm -hmm. to or uh, instituted before. So, even as a cursory review, I would recommend that the planning commission would stay involved, even if you determine that it's a um, it's a simple administrative review that is required to go before the planning commission at, at one of the meetings. Um, you could attach those conditions so that the applicant isn't um, accountable for preparing, you know, an entire plan and um, having that financial um, responsibility as part of a regular site plan process, so that it kind of mirrors more or reflects. Uh, the nature of the request. So it could be an administrative site plan that goes before the commission. I think that you, you have to recognize that we try to be business friendly. And this isn't the only situation where we've done this in the past. We did this with the drive-in theater over at the ice arena. And we also do it with uh, with Home Depot when they put out their, you know, their spring gardening supply. There was a plan that was developed. There's an agreement there. 
that there's a change in, in manager. Uh, in fact, that and there was. The guy was here a couple of months ago. We go back and we review it and see where there are any problems. The, the first year or two, there were some issues with it, but we were able to mutually agree. It wasn't, uh, you know, a difficult process at all. Uh, you know, once it was pointed out what some of the issues were, uh, we we moved ahead with it. So we try to work together as a team, you folks and us. We're just trying to protect the township and your customers. We want to make that particular plaza to be a good place to come and uh, and um, uh, uh, shop. We're not, we're not restricting you. We're just wanting to work together as a team to ensure that we have a good uh, circulation in that particular lot. We did everything for possibly we could, I mean, been asked to do on this side, shy from the outside city. There's nothing we didn't do. There's, we, 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 we increased the aisle. We, we reduced square footage. We did everything and we recognize and 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 we came a long way this is uh, this is my third years in this job if you tell me about friendly you know i mean i don't know how friendly it is after three years you know i it took me three years to approve the site down the street and i built it in two months and they are open uh, and they are and look if it's successful or not it is open and it's intact and should guys you know compliment us on that development and it's going on we are trying to bring an, a nice development to the corner. We are not, like, we all working the same tour thing, the same thing, that we want successful businesses going there. And I think we brought, you know, sound, you know, names and sound, uh, uh, you know, concept in here. The thing is in here, we are really, in, in, in uh, and we, we're trying to come to middle ground, is about this remain spa remaining spaces. So the space is left. If we, you guys want us to restrict them or come back, I have no problem if, it, if the building department, if we go in front of the building department to, to ensure that, you know, the order, I mean, the code. But, but Meg, you were just told that that, does, that doesn't happen. That, yeah. that, that the building department doesn't take it that far when, you, when you're seeking occupancy. What we so, so that's, I mean, I don't, I don't understand your arbitrariness because if you're going to, you're, you're going to, to, if you, if you do bring something to us that complies, there's no basis for us to disapprove it. So, you know, I don't understand why you think that we're being, we're being, extraordinarily difficult with you. We're actually accommodating you on the parking. And so all we're asking from you is that if you decide you want to bring some other other some use other than retail, that you come back to us and at least give us the opportunity to review it. That's all we're asking. And so you, to me, you know, you talk to me about being here for three years. Well, Ned, 90% of that problem is yours because you don't hire the adequate, the correct people to give, give us good drawings and things like that. That is your problem and not our problem. It was not our problem. No, uh, Mr. Pryor, I don't want to go that far. And I, I'm and not I here to argue with that. Either, I am trying to be. Did. You just did. You said, oh, I've done all these wonderful things. Well, yes, you brought it into, into compliance. That's what you have done. You have brought it into compliance with the exception of the parking. And you are not in compliance with the parking. I don't care what you say. And I will tell you that, that this accommodation that we're asking from you is totally reasonable from my perspective. Because you're asking for us to give you a 20% parking accommodation. But I would be in favor of uh, having that uh, accommodation or, or that taken care of. If, if you have something other than 
uh, normal retail that you submitted administratively uh, to the uh, planning department, which may entail coming before the commission if, if it's not clear that uh, there's a consistent uh, use. So that, that's, uh, I mean, I, I'd be willing to go along with that. And not the building department, because I think we're, we're not sure what, the, what they would do. But if it goes to the, uh, the planning department, and they think that your case is solid, that you've made uh, um, a, a, a good case, that it's no impact on the parking, uh, they can choose to go ahead and uh, pass it on through. If it's questionable, it should come back to the commission. I think that's basically what Laura was suggesting too. Correct, I was suggesting um, an, an administrative, but that it would go back to the planning commission regardless. Um, that you would ultimately hold that and not have it rely on whether it's myself or somebody else in the future uh, to make that distinction. And it does follow what we've done in, at, in other instances, namely the, the drive-in and uh, the Home Depot. Yes, and those were also special land uses, um, which this project is also a special land use. Mm -hmm. Well, you can be thinking about that a bit, but maybe you can show us some of the building materials. So maybe we can get off that topic for a little while. The taco bell material uh, is in here, and it's going to be tried and looked at. And if any questions are regarding that material on taco bell or the I did have a question on the Panera uh, materials. You know, I looked at the plans that were emailed to us, and I was looking at the, uh, the awnings that you're showing on the building. So I see some of them are, are a canvas-type material. Uh, but then I think the ones uh, over the drive through they're metal, and I think the, the, aw the other awnings were green and the metal ones were black. Did I read that? Because I have to really blow it up to see it. Use a mic. Yeah. It wasn't our intent to be canvas. That he's was called up. No, he's talking no, about the can. The, 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 the Panera. Panera. I think it was on the Panera one. So, and maybe Panera wants to make a comment on this as well, but it was our intent that we knew we were going to have a metal canopy over the drive through The awnings that were added on the back were canvas, were requested by Laura. So that's the, you know, the difference. Now, you point out another uh, issue of the awnings on the front being green because the awnings called out in the back were black at least and that's the way we redid them yeah I, I did notice I thought from when I looked at it the, the metal ones were black and the canvas ones were green am I correct on that was my Laura what did you, did you look call at, out or you can plan? maybe blow it up and see it on the plan Sorry, it's calling number nine, which is uh, the canopy here, um, as black canvas awning color aspen. Oh, it did say black. Because okay. aspen, I thought, was more like a green color, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's a little, un I mean, it's naming two different colors, or unless the color aspen is more precise uh, shade of black. Well, my question is, should all the awnings, the colors match? What, what's the command? I really don't I'd care agree. what color they are, just that they that they match. As long as we have the discretion to do that. Because these uh, uh, elevations haven't been approved by Panera yet. And oh. I know we're going to, I understand we're going to do the elevations administratively. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we'll bring it back. We, we had our architect over, work overtime to get this thing done so we could look at it today. 
okay. and have something that was pretty close to the finished product, yeah. but we can certainly pick up those details. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, no, I understand. Well, it's and you're right, for, I said administrative, but administrative yeah. review committee. But it's important for two of the members that are here, here from the commission, so that can provide us with some guidance as to okay. how we should look at it. We can make those changes. Yeah. Well, be consistent at least. Uh, other comments on the, on any of the elevations on the uh, Taco Bell or Panera or the rest of it? I thought we are really right now past uh, the uh, Panera samples of their ma building material. Okay. So now with the, uh, the two colors. Uh, Have you seen these, Laura? No, but I can get them at the end of the. Oh, okay. okay. Between the uh, between the middle section of the building and between the end caps of the building, and uh, this uh, those colors are a result of that. that one's pretty good. Now, I think they have changed since what we originally were talking about. Uh, not necessarily the color itself, but where we're putting them on the buildings. We're, you know, we had our architect make the changes. We seem they were, seemed to be, that they were good suggestions. So am I right that that you're going to develop uh, the facades for the Panera building, if we want to call it that? Not Taco Bell, because that's already set in stone as I understand it yeah yeah okay and and then the Panera one you have to submit the Panera first in order yeah. to get their approval we're gonna leave open okay I, I mentioned in my email once, to you guys they, today. once they approve it then you'll bring it to the administrative committee the big building which is include Panera Right. It's got two towers on each end. Right. We agreed those two towers would be one color, and the middle would be the second color. Okay. And we were in a meeting, a couple uh, administrative meetings, and uh, we talked about how we're going to uh, uh, accent this this way. The two towers will be one color, and the middle will be one color. And it would be in a line of gray and darker gray. Right. And, and, and that's how I presented today, yeah, and, and exactly they're, what we thought. They're, they're just representative, and I understand all that. But from my perspective, and Laura, you can help me out here, which you usually do. But from my perspective, it would make no sense at all for you to not get, you know, show your um, elevations to Mr. Panera over here and get his approval before you submit it to the, to the administrative committee. That would, that's our intent. Okay. No, by all means. Laura, can you bring up the, the other building, the two towers, so that the commission can see, just so they understand that the two towers, you know, the two upper ones would be one color, you know, one type of brick, and then the middle lower section would be another color or another type. Any comments from anyone about the, the general design of the facade? There are some canopies out front, uh, drop down, or, or not. As it's proposed in this elevation, um, these are just metal canopies uh, here and here that would extend out. 
question. What color would the metal pen be for black as well? Likely. So whatever Panera uh, agrees to, you'll follow that same theme to the other tower and complement the middle section between those two. On the cabinet. On the cabinet. And the brick as well. I mean, they're going to look at the brick. Or? Well, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the brick is, or, you know, we've, we've got it, but, but they could be on that too. Okay. This so, elevation's come a long ways. We all were looking at in a study. We had a study session where we actually brought the materials, looked at it. Well, I don't know if we had a study session on this one, but it was a lot busier. Yeah. Three different brick colors. Um, no, you. You, you know, you not enough soldier course. This has got a lot of breaks in the back now, so that the the uh, 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 south elevation looks just as good as the north elevation. This is going to be a. Um, uh, you know, a statement yeah. at the entrance no, you, of your community. You, you do have. So, Laura, on the, the signage, uh, is that going to come back to the commission or is that done administratively or how is that going to ha be handled? The applicant is requesting that signage be approved um, through the building department with the sign permit. Since this isn't in the ARC district, um, it doesn't require planning commission review. Um, if they were to deviate from the ordinances, it would go to the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals first. Okay. And, and I, you're gonna be I can tell you just on that issue that we just had one uh, at zoning uh, this, this month uh, for uh, our friends at uh, Buddy's Pizza. Um, concerning uh, uh, an additional sign on the front of the building that they wanted for their uh, carry out area, um, which uh, was approved. And uh, uh, it, you know, if, if they try to bring a sign that doesn't meet the ordinance, then, then they're gonna have to come to zoning for a variance. So I'm not very concerned about, about that kind of issue. So there are still a couple of outstanding issues on the landscaping, so you're going to be working through those? I understand that the set we turned in on Friday or last week should have reflected those changes. What happened is Laura had reviewed a set and our landscape architect did not get things completed, so we put it in our final package. So I'm assuming all those comments he should have made on those last set that you now have. Did you have an opportunity to review those, Laura? So before uh, you got here, I was going over the landscape plan, and uh, basically there's still some concern here um, because of the road work that's going on um, on Five Mile that some of the existing vegetation might be impacted. We want to make sure that this is accurate and just make finalize what the county is working on. So I think that's in it. Uh, outstanding item um, but as far as the additional landscaping that's been provided along the south and west portions of the site we're ha happy with that so why don't when we come back for the elevations we'll just kind of give you an update on that yes fair enough and we're grateful for Home Depot to agree to maintain that that south landscaping strip too yeah it uh, it's gonna be an event for them as well as the shopping center yeah, usually it's tough to get them to make a decision. Okay. You must have been persuasive. Okay. Any other comments, concerns, questions from the commission? Okay. Well, are we ready? Let me let me try that. Okay. Okay. Uh, this will be a motion to approve uh, application 2245-0517-B uh, uh, with the understanding that uh, minor, uh, minor details will be worked out administratively as well as getting full engineering approval. 
And with respect to the uh, uh, remaining uh, units other than the Panera, uh, the primary units of Panera and Taco Bell, that if there uh, is uh, anything other than a normal retail application that they would submit uh, a, uh, a plan to the planning department uh, that uh, uh, demonstrated that there's no adverse effect on the uh, parking situation and that would uh, come to then to the uh, planning commission with a recommendation from the planner. Yes, and the elevations will be reviewed by the uh, uh, review committee. And they are going to block the green view. Right, right. As well as the landscape. Second. Moved by Commissioner Postel and supported by Commissioner Pratt to approve uh, application 2245-0517B subject to set conditions. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Well, good luck to you yes. and welcome Panera and Taco Bell <laughs> to the township. We appreciate well, you considering it. We do, but <laughs> another Taco Bell. <laughs> On the, on the north side. You can never have enough Taco Bells <laughs> <laughs> or Paneras. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. All right. And the planning and zoning uh, monthly report, Laura, that's yours. Yes. If there's any um, questions or comments um, from the commission on the latest project activity, um, I had one, Laura, and, and it was uh, uh, that uh, proposal uh, that's just south of M14. Is that officially dead now? The the um, the one the uh, storage unit place that. No, I believe they were still working. It's with not on the list anywhere. I couldn't find it on the list. Correct. Uh, it's it's been completely closed out um, in the planning department. So they're working with the building um, official on those permits. But I'll send an email to Sherry um, before this week's up, and I'll. I, it, there hasn't been any any movement on the site, and I and I remember the guy came back and asked for an extension. Uh, you know, I think that was a year ago, and and I think that that extension. Uh, has long passed, uh, but um, I just wonder because he was having trouble with AT and T or somebody like that to get the driveway down mm -hmm. to, to Sheldon Road, if I remember right. And on that note, um, Fugao, directly south on Sheldon, they are going to be expanding now and adding a third shift. I was just informed yesterday, <coughs> um, so that's going to bring some more employees and traffic to Sheldon in that area, and they're looking at doing a um, another light there to accommodate that oh that the the glass place yep yep yeah. Wayne County is looking at doing that huh. well, that'll be interesting yes <laughs> <coughs> I, I have a few questions sure. the food truck court is that still uh, being planned or are we done with it final approval or we'll we did Yes, we did do final approval, um, and they are almost, um, they're doing some of their infrastructure improvements, so if you drive by, you'll kind of see things yeah, shaping up. I did up. by on my way to uh, uh, the, uh, what, what, where was I coming? Oh, the Zoning Board of Appeals, because um, I you know, golf out at Six Mile on Thursday. So um, I did come by there uh, the last two meetings. And uh, it looks to me, uh, this last time, which was just the, like the 11th of July, that they're very close to mm -hmm. having those infrastructure things done. Yeah, I think that they wanted to be done by the, the end of July and then be open. And um, 
he had submitted some designs for signage. That wasn't something that he had included with his site plan, so he's working on that now. And he wanted to do kind of a welcome to Plymouth um, signage there, but it may require a variance just based on the setback. So that, that might be. I don't, I don't even know how, if he can ever, it, it, it just looks, to me, it just looks so small that, you know, those places that he's going to put the food trucks, mm -hmm. this looks so small. I don't know where to put a sign, but whatever. Yeah, we'll see what his uh, plan is, but. I think he has he has good intentions and in, you know stating that's a kind of welcome to the Plymouth community. One other question, uh, I think it might follow the same sort of route. What about the Dunkin' Donuts? Is <coughs> everything approved or waiting? Yes, everything is approved with Dunkin' Donuts. Um, I thought they were pulling building permits, but um, I haven't heard anything. So I'll follow up. With Sherry, and I'll, I'll CC the commission. Anything else? Did you have something? Oh. Uh, okay. If there's nothing else, then uh, is there a motion to receive and file? So I move. Uh, or I'll second. Okay. Move by Commissioner Barbarina and supported by Commissioner Pratt to receive and file the monthly report. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the motion carries. And the 2018-19 uh, economic development presentation. Mr. Chairman, I move that we um, receive and file the 2018-19 economic development presentation. Okay. Your support? Aye. Moved and supported. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the motion carries. Are there any planning commissioner comments? Okay. Yes. Who regulates the traffic along Five Mile Corridor? We were just talking about this place. Who, who manages the stop line, stop signs, and the like comment? Well, Laura is on the Five Mile Road uh, Committee, whatever they call it. So maybe you can address some of that, and maybe you can give uh, Bob a little uh, rundown of wh what's happening on that corridor. Certainly. So there is the um, MITC, the Michigan International Technology Center corridor, and that um, runs from Five Mile and back all the way to Napier. And Five Mile is under the jurisdiction of Wayne County. Um, and it's the improvements that are being made to um, Five and Beck and Six and um, Beck and Five and Sheldon. Um, are in conjunction with the county and a grant, um, a CMAC grant that was received. So they are working on some signal um, signalization timing. And, and because it's a 40 minute wait from the bridge right now to get up to the front five, I did it today. Yeah. But all the development trucks are running along the mm -hmm. I, I would agree. The um, I think that's something that we've heard um, from other he gave you the high sign, I think. members of the public um, it's showing red. recently. But they are making improvements on that intersection. They've yeah, been working on it for months. There's a right turn only lane, Laura, that's going to be going in there. Mm -hmm. And and what about the uh, the left turn. I th I thought I read somewhere there was going to be two left turn lanes. A double left, yeah. Right. Oh, I know. It's a m and in fact, uh, when the Home Depot uh, manager was here a couple of meetings ago, uh, it was brought up at that meeting that some of those big trucks that are going out to the landfill are turning into uh, the Home Depot lot. You know, cutting through it. Uh, are because they really? Because they're trying to avoid the whole thing, and they're they're really ruining some landscaping in that boulevard on that south uh, entrance. And he's he's fixed that up. And so um, the police department has, uh, you know, we we requested that the police department go over there and monitor that a bit, as well as trucks that are just spending a the night there, which Home Depot doesn't want them to do. And from we had some communication that uh, from Home Depot that it has helped. Uh, since the, uh, there's been a police presence there. So it is a problem right now with the construction. Yeah. So Wayne County is responsible for fixing that? 
Yeah. 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 Basically, Wayne County is responsible for all the roads in Plymouth Township. Other questions or comments from the commission? I move we adjourn. Uh, moved by Commissioner Pratt and supported by Commissioner Barbarina to adjourn the meeting at 835. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned. <laughs>